I'm going to guide you through the process, the tripart process of interoception, resourcing, and pendulation. Uh, if, if you find this exercise difficult, if you're not getting relief from it, I very much suggest uh, that you go ahead and look at my other video with the basic body scan. You can try that or my video about basic meditation, be, being guided through that. It can help you sort of activate and get used to the feelings inside the body that will really help you with this exercise to get real relief from it. I work with a lot of people who, when they've done this in session, they say, oh, I wish I could remember exactly how I did it uh, between sessions. I'd really like to be able to uh, get relief from whether it's pain or anxiety or to reactivate sensations of pleasure and joy. Uh, they want to get back to it, and so uh, this is pretty much the relief trifecta. And uh, for, for those of you who want to get more into the resourcing, if you're feeling pretty good and really want to feel better, enhance performance, look at my video on somatic resourcing. Uh, this will be a very, very basic version of resourcing in this video here. So go ahead and start with some access breathing. Quick breath in. Slow breath out. And as you breathe out, notice what's tight that doesn't need to be. Look for places you can move around or shift around to optimize your comfort. Do a couple more of those. Quick breath in. Slow breath out. Notice what's tight. So if you're dealing with pain or anxiety, if it's anxiety, there's usually there's there's going to be a physical manifestation of the pain. Um, if it's a very uncomfortable feeling in the body in some other form, uh, an emptiness, a sadness, uh, a, a, a different type of discomfort. What I'm going to invite you to do for the interoception part is to find where in the body it exists. Uh, if you want to get more into this, I have a basic video on just simple interoception. We're going to do the trifecta today though. So start by breathing and feeling where in your body the pain is, whether it's physical or the bodily manifestation of your emotional pain. I'm going to invite you to notice if it's high in the body, if it's low in the body, if it's somewhere in the head or the throat or the chest, just find its general location. Which part feels active? Which part feels odd or off? And again, if it's hard to feel, definitely you'll want to uh, practice with just simple body scanning, getting used to feeling your body and accessing your body in that way. Uh, if you're already good at that, go ahead and find where it is in the body. And I'm going to ask you to start to notice its dimensions. The feeling of discomfort, notice how wide it is, how far it reaches, how deep beneath the skin it seems to rest at its core, how close to the surface it rises, and whether it moves around or emanates to different parts of you or just stays really solid where it is. Breathe. Continue to breathe and bring your awareness into the shape, the dimensions, the sides, the depth, of the feeling, just noticing it. Now this can tend to have a limiting effect. Uh, what will happen is sometimes people, as they start to notice their pain and really become embodied with it, uh, sometimes it gets worse, sometimes it, it, it gets bigger, uh, but typically there's, there's a limiting effect. It starts to go to its right size as you really start to notice uh, in a, in a non-fearful manner. See, the thing is, you and me, we don't just have feelings, we have feelings about our feelings and thoughts about our feelings. A lot of times we'll feel uh, worried about our pain or hopeless about our pain, anxious about our anxiety. Uh, we, can, we can start to limit that, that extra sort of armoring or expanding of the pain by just noticing exactly where it is in a curious manner. I'm inviting you to be curious about your pain, curious about your anxiety. Whatever form the pain takes, whether it's emotional or physical, find where it is in the body and get curious about its shape exactly where it is and as you start to notice exactly where it is and how it moves if it moves uh, it, it also starts to limit it starts to differentiate you start to notice exactly where the pain isn't so breathe quick breath in slow breath out if that helps and notice exactly where the pain is how wide it expands or narrow how deep beneath the skin it seems to rest, how close to the surface it rises, 
and now uh, to sort of partner with the, between the sub neocortical and subcortical parts of the brain, I'm going to ask you to just give it a color. If you're able to visualize, and a lot of people are, just go ahead and imagine that there's a color to the pain. Choose a color that seems to fit what it feels like. Just notice that. Notice the shape of it in the body. Now, a lot of people, as they start to do this, uh, they'll start to notice some movement, especially if they're starting to relax the structures around the pain. Uh, they're starting to let go of some of the bracing patterns and emotional sort of armor that comes up in the body. You see, the body, a lot of times, it treats emotional pain like some kind of a wound or a break. And the fact is, even if you have a real wound or a break, uh, this, this can help. You'll notice temperature changes as you bring your awareness into the pain exactly where it is and where it isn't. And ideally, of course, if it is a wound or a break, you're getting proper medical care because uh, that, that basic aspect has to be taken care of. But go ahead and quick breath in, slow breath out. Notice what's tight and bring your awareness into the uncomfortable sensation wherever it is in the body. And in a moment here, we're going to go to just a real basic form of resourcing. The most important thing first is to notice exactly where the pain is and its shape and how it's moving while you're noticing it. Okay, next we're going to go to resourcing. You've brought your awareness into the pain. You know exactly where in the body it shows up. You started to let it differentiate so you can feel where it is and where it isn't. And I'm going to invite you to find a place in your body that is free from the pain and ideally one that even feels good. Whether it's a feeling of solidarity and that's what you're looking for or a feeling of just simple neutrality where, where, where you don't feel uh, the pain, where it just it doesn't exist, or a feeling of goodness. If you actually have a part of your body that feels good or pleasurable, uh, focus on that part. And similar to when we were doing interoception on the pain, I'm going to invite you to really pay attention to exactly where the most relieving or solid or pleasurable sensation is in the body and to notice how deep beneath the skin it seems to rest. How close to the surface it seems to rise how wide the sensation of goodness or solidarity is, how high it reaches. Notice if it has a temperature that's different than other parts of you. Notice its shape and if it moves around or if it sits solid, just notice exactly where it is, whether it's a big swath of the body or some little tiny part of you. Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll hear uh, somebody say, well, I feel my legs, you know, both of my legs feel uh, really stable right now. Like they can support me and they like that feeling and they'll, they'll just focus on the legs. Uh, other people feel a very small uh, part of the body that just feels good right next to the pain. That's fine. Just notice exactly where it is, whether it's a little tiny part near the pain, far from the pain. Notice exactly which part of your body feels that sense of goodness, how wide it is, how deep beneath the skin it rests how close to the surface it rises. Just focus on the sensation. Notice the felt sense of exactly where it is. Now, for some people, there's an automatic sort of expansion as they notice it. They start to notice that it spreads uh, that feeling of goodness into other parts of the body. As you notice the felt sense of it, notice if it expands or if it just kind of sits there. And I'm gonna invite you, just like with the pain, to give it a color sort of uh, partnering with the upper level thinking, imagining part of the brain and the deeper level neocortical structures to sort of give it a color so that you can start to let it give you feedback. Notice that comfortable part of that body, that safe part of your body, that even if it's a pleasurable part of your body, find it. Give it a color. Notice its shape, its width, its depth. Breathe. And I'm going to ask you as you give it a color to imagine that you can give it a little nudge with your mind, if it does, hasn't done this already uh, on its own, uh, give it a little nudge with your mind to see how far it spreads. If you're imagining a color, if, you're, if, you're, if you can visualize, uh, notice where the color seems to spread when you give it a little nudge. You're not shoving it into different parts of your body, you're not forcing it, you're partnering with the sensations in your body. 
that kind of arise naturally. Give it a little nudge, see where it can expand in your body and where it stops. Whether it doesn't expand at all, whether it expands a lot and reaches into a lot of different parts of the body, or whether it just moves a little. Just breathe and notice where the sensation expands. If, if you're imagining a color, notice where the color spreads, where the actual felt sense spreads with it. Sometimes people will get a, a, a their, their imagination will create a color all throughout the body, but the feeling doesn't go with it. Just really pay attention to where the feeling spreads with it. And I'm going to invite you at the point of contact where it stops spreading. I'm going to invite you to uh, notice what happens at the point of contact where it stops. Does it completely stop? Does it move around at the point of contact? Or does it actually reach around the places of the body where it doesn't enter and spread into other parts of the body? And pay close attention to just what happens and what doesn't happen. How far it spreads, how far it doesn't spread. Whether it jumps into other parts of the body, around the parts it can't spread into, or whether it really just stops. And really just notice that. And this is going to seem a little bit strange uh, to some people, but go ahead and uh, send a message in your mind of thank you down to both of those parts that showed up that allowed you to color them and notice them. Uh, the purpose of this is to establish a partnership, to strengthen the partnership and the communication between your thinking, imagining, visualizing mind and then the deeper subcortical structures in your neurological system. You send a thank you to reduce the resistance so that you can start to have more neurodynamic flow. So go ahead and Think about that part with the resource state in your body, the part that feels good, however far it's spread, and send a message of thank you in your mind down to it, and also the pain part. Wherever it is or, or was, if it's, if it's shrunk or if it's changed by now, go ahead and send a message of thank you for the communication. You're not necessarily thanking your body for the pain, just thanking it for being willing to work with you here. And that's, that's establishing a partnership basically sort of humanizing a part of you so it can use your visual system or your language system to speak back to you. The thing is the body is constantly sending you messages. Uh, you don't always hear them and it's kind of an important part of survival uh, that we don't always hear all of our body's messages. Uh, but every now and again that survival system of shutting off feelings that goes awry, it ends up uh, leaving us subject to uh, neuroceptive processes that lead to increased pain, bracing patterns, uh, growing uh, panic or anxiety that turns into panic attack. The anxiety leaks. Uh, a lot of that, that happens regularly, often and intensely with uh, traumatic experiences for people. And sometimes uh, medical trauma with, uh, with surgeries and so forth, if, if anything goes a little bit funny there. So go ahead and uh, now that you've thanked these parts of your body, notice where the sensations of goodness are, how far they've spread, feel them and just sort of revel in that for a moment and then bring your awareness back into the part that has the pain. Go ahead and notice how deep beneath the skin it rests, rests, how wide it is, how high it reaches. Go ahead and just notice it. Notice its shape. Notice where it is and where it isn't. And now we're engaging in the process of pendulation. Pendulation is bringing your awareness into the two different areas in the body. If they're actually in the same part of the body, and I've seen people do that, this, this still works. Go ahead and do that. Bring your awareness into the pain feeling. And then bring your awareness back to the resource feeling, wherever it is or was. Just bring your awareness back to the resource feeling, how wide it extends, how deep beneath the skin it rests, how far it's reached. And then Again, pendulate back. Bring your awareness back to where the pain is or was. See, as your body self-adjusts and self-heals, it follows this process naturally. It pendulates. And there's thoughts that often will come with the feelings. A lot of times, uh, for example, with a near miss on the highway, or with something kind of uncomfortable that just happens, your thoughts will jump back there, you'll You'll feel a little bit of the angst or the pain or the worry, and then you're going to go back to the feeling of safety where you're at now, where you've arrived at a place of okayness and general uh, wellness, and, and sometimes even with the feeling of 
and the thought of, oh, thank goodness that's over, I'm feeling better now. And, and then sometimes you'll just swing back and forth between those feelings and thoughts until there's uh, just a plenary relief uh, where basically the difficult experience, the worrisome experience has become a part of your past. Now when that doesn't happen right, when that doesn't happen naturally, uh, this kind of process can help reactivate your natural neurodynamic flow for self-adjustment, self-healing. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, Milton Erickson used to say is once you kick the, ro the log, the river will start flowing. Essentially, when you've had something that's sort of blocked up, energy blocked, uh, some sort of a intrusive thought that's, that's blocked up, it's not going anywhere, uh, this, is, this is how you kick the log. This is one of the ways you can do it. Bring your awareness into the pain. Find a resource state. Uh, work and partner with the subcortical structures to expand it by giving it a, a color, you know, nudging it with your mind to see where it ex ex expands, where it can stretch. And then uh, bring your awareness back to the pain and back to the resource. Pendulate. Become aware of the resource. Become aware of the pain. And continue to go back and forth as the body relieves itself. And if you get cues from your body to move in a different way, to shift in a different way, go ahead and bring your awareness into those and, and take your body's cues. Reestablish that partnership with the self-adjusting, self-healing body. And again, if this is difficult for you, if you're not getting relief, if it's just not working for you, I very much suggest that you go to my video on the, the body scan uh, or the video on the basic meditation process. Uh, or alternatively, if you really want to get more into resourcing, I have a different video on the resourcing, somatic resourcing, to get a little further into that with a different process than we used here. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to get notifications on other videos that I put in.